Hey everyone, it's Elizabeth here. So I just wanted to do this quick video. Um, I'm feeling a lot better this evening than I did um, this morning. I felt really bad. Um, we'll see how tomorrow goes because I have my pack that I have to carry um, from Barcelos to Baluges. And I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping you guys can hear this. I'm trying to find like a quiet spot in the city. Um, but today was like an interesting day of reflection in the last video that I just did kind of kind of the walk and talk is, um, you know, I was talking about how when you spend time in the spiritual world, you tend to see the material world a lot differently. And so sometimes it's a good thing and sometimes it's not. Um, because you can go down the rabbit hole and get really lost in the spiritual world and just see everything as evil in the material world. And so I'm trying not to do that, but I guess this is a spiritual journey. To some degree in my life, I am repeating my own history. Um, I'm seeing things from the same perspective as I did when I lived in the yoga ashram in Brisbane, Australia in 2008. And then also just seeing things differently from living in the actual ashram and studying yoga in India in 2007. And the one thing um, that I, I'm noticing is, I mean, it's apparent, especially in America, but even here, it's, it's the domination of the, the kind of the corporate affluent world. And so I do think a lot of like the Roman Empire in itself is repeating itself. And to some degree, we are kind of bloated <laughs> with parasites in our body in terms of in our body but also that's a, like that's a metaphor for what's happening um kind of in in the real world um and what i mean by that it's just funny when you like we've been eating too much sugar for too long right so everything is just very decadent and when things become too decadent and indulgent um that tends to destruct itself and if you look at the roman empire it was the largest empire that i believe that's ever ruled the planet and that system failed and falled and you know they were very very decadent people in terms of not only um kind of with food but like with sex and alcohol and brothels and things like that and um yeah i guess we're kind of like no different today um europe is obviously a little bit more balanced you know the one thing that i do love seeing here is how disconnected people are from technology it's like people are with and I saw this in Germany when I lived there. It's like people are connected to um, conversation with their family and friends. And I do think Australia, um, America, and England all have some form of energetic interconnection just because we are English-speaking countries and we've all originated from England and Britain to some degree, our cultures have. Um, so, you know, everything kind of leads itself from the West and from America. We are the leaders in a lot of different ways and that can be a good thing and also a bad thing. Um, a lot of countries are following with what we're doing. Um, but some of the point that I wanted to, to make on this video is that when the more I'm starting to talk to the common folk, um, you know, it's just, I become, my, my heart just bleeds more for the common man uh, or woman and and for this middle working class. And the reason why I say this is because in my own self, I, I'm repeating my own history, not only in the way that I see things, but also kind of cosmically. I mean, I know I joke, my birthday is February 7th. I joke all the time about um, you know being born on the same day as Charles Dickens. And when you read about Dickens, he, a lot of his, stories actually came by analyzing the wealthier type crowds or analyzing society the different levels of like the peasants like I would not want to be a peasant in the 1800s that would have been horrible um, but he's analyzing these different types of people and if you've ever been to London or have ever learned a little bit about Charles Dickens he actually went to like certain I guess you'd call him like a pub or a, a restaurant or something and that's where he would do a lot of his analytics to say and these real life people were actually characters that he created for his story um, or many stories I should say and so with him and I had another person in thought earlier um, who I was thinking about oh I can't 
Oh, um, oh wait, he just, it just left my brain. Sorry, this is gonna take a second. Um, oh, my, my body today. With Charles Dickens, but also, um, oh my God, sorry, Vincent Van Gogh. This is, okay, got it. So, you know, Van Gogh was an interesting character. I mean, obviously he had amazing paintings, but he really, man, he really put down the people of Paris. Um, if you read a little bit about him or if you understand a little bit of his history, he, he loved kind of the farm and the, <laughs> and the rural life and the working class and the poor people. I mean, he was an artist, like not many artists are very popular and famous and rich in their present life. Some of them obviously become more popular once they die. So it's like, I'm just connecting to these human beings and their real life stories. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm sitting here and I'm like analyzing this kind of like more elite type culture, you know, here in Braga. And I'm like, God, maybe I'm like a Vincent Van Gogh where I'm just like all about the power of the people and the power of like the farming peasants. And then I'm completely like mortified by some of the like the elitist personality and stuff. Um, it's not all bad. I'm not saying it isn't. I mean, if I were to say I'm not enjoying a latte and like a piece of cake at a cafe, I would be lying. But the thing is, it's like a balance point, right? And if you, it's like a guy who constantly, um, you know, dates a gold digger woman. If you can't quite figure out what type of woman is a gold digger, then that's your own problem or like maybe you're continuously choosing the wrong type of people or the women but like you can tell some people who definitely have no spiritual sound uh, or base in their life and you're seeing that a lot more with this kind of younger generation um, this happened to me in Portland in 2016 um, my ex and I went there because he had a conference and there was a couple cute churches in downtown Portland and so I walked in and it was just like all the old people that were like World War II generation, they're on their last leg. And I'm like, oh my God, this is it. Like there was two, I went to two different churches and there was one family in each church, they were Asian, that had their kind of teenage kids with them. But other than that, there was nobody my age. There was no one of my generation. It was all of like my mother and father's age and, and my grandparents' age. And I was like, oh my God, we're losing it. And so I walked out of this church and I went down the road. Now this is a Sunday morning, mind you. And it's like all the millennials are at their little, <laughs> they're at these like brunches, like holding up and cheering their mimosas. And I'm like, oh my God, like we're done. And the thing is like, I've been to how many churches in Portugal in three days? Like 12, 13. And everybody in there is old no one in there is from my generation or younger. I saw one kid, there was one boy, he, I don't know, he might have been like 13 or 14, he probably was there with his mom. And so I remember this experience in Portland, I talked to like my husband about it, I'm like, I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, why don't people have faith? And the thing is, you know, my ex-husband made a good point. He was like, people have faith when they're poor and when they're going through hardship and, and like some forms of desperation in life. And I'm like, this completely makes sense because a lot of people my parents' age and older suffered really tough lives or like my mother grew up very poor because she was raised by immigrants who came over from World War II and they washed floors and cleaned, you know, buildings, simple, peasant life they were once farmers in the Ukraine in the Carpathian Mountains and then they were you know custodial staff in America so our generations we're not struggling we're it's it's that's what I'm saying is like we're bloated with parasites in terms of like we've been eating too much sugar things are so decadent that there is no need to connect to God or at least in the West Coast in Seattle there is the really big atheist culture especially in the tech industry it's because they are so overly logical and they are so trained in this realm that they can't see see anything like with your third eye anything other than logic reason analytics and life being like a computer but we're we're not machines we're not computers and so um 
you know, I had this conversation with um, a, a guy who was supposed to house sit for me, and you know, he he mentioned that God didn't make us to sit at a computer for eight hours a day, and I'm like, I 100% agree with him and his perspective on that. It's like, and this is why I think I'm kind of falling in love with this farm and rural life, is because this is like the natural way of moving. I work in fitness. Fitness, The fitness industry didn't start until the 80s, and the reason why it started is because we started sitting more. We had more business, jobs. Um, we, The gym basically replaced everything that we used to do, whether it was machine work in a factory, farming, um, you know, you're like a mailman walking around. Everything we used to do in humanity in terms of job and work was all upright moving and standing And so the gym kind of replaced that as we started with this like TV Dinner culture the television culture um, desk the desk work that you know business started in the 80s now It's like the tech industry is the big place to earn money because Wall Street saturated um, So I don't know these I guess are just some thoughts that I had for today it, it's just really interesting because it's like once these people die out, like are these churches and stuff even gonna be existing anymore? It's like, this kind of is the death of like Christianity. I know spirituality is changing a lot. Um, and obviously that generation was raised differently than we are now. Like people are spiritual through, you know, yoga and meditation, which I'm all for that. Um, but it's just very, very fascinating and interesting to see because if I do ever get married again, which would be nice, I would like to get married again, and if I do ever have children, it's like the Europe they're gonna experience is gonna be a lot different than what is in my brain. And I have a couple older friends who are in their 40s. Um, they're, they're single women, you know, they don't want children, and the Europe they know from growing up in the 60s, 70s, and 80s it's like that was Germany or that was Spain. Um, the world they know now, it's not Europe. They say it's, they're actually Americans who speak like Spanish or they speak German or they speak Deutsch, or not Deutsch, Dutch. And so that's really interesting to think about because this globalization is real, it's happening. And um, yeah, I don't know, it's just funny. It's, it's absolutely interesting today I sat in a church there were more tourists coming in and snapping their fucking photos like crazy um, <laughs> than there are people sitting there and actually praying to God. So, I don't know, just kind of interesting. Well, thank you so much for listening. These are just some thoughts. Um, I will be on the Camino Trail tomorrow, and um, uh, I hope it goes well. I am... I'm, I'm, this bag even the lady at the pharmacist is like 10 kilos she's like what are you thinking it's too heavy and I'm like I had to bring a DSLR camera that was like two kilos four and a half pounds all right people thank you so much bye